Hi, everyone. Um, we're so excited to be here today to talk to you about uh, the uh, complexities of oncology studies and the technology that um, can really help drive those types of studies forward. Uh, my name is Heather DeFrusha. I'm the Associate Director of RTSM IWRS um, at Axiom Real Time Metric. So anything relating to inventory management and randomization enrollment um, that goes through myself and my team. And I'm here with my colleague, Caitlin, to talk to you today. Caitlin? Hi, everyone. Uh, as Heather mentioned, my name is Caitlin Townsley, and I'm the Associate Director of Product Innovation here at Axiom. Um, so I work on helping kind of update and, uh, and keep our technology up to date with lots of great features and then consult with different teams as to um, what solutions might be best for their projects. So I'll help walk us through some of that today. Great. Thanks, Caitlin. So some quick metrics about us here at Axiom. Um, so we've completed over 700 plus studies, one of those being a 40,000 uh, subject randomized trial. Um, we have uh, over 35 uh, different therapeutic areas uh, when it comes to our experience, many of that being within oncology. And we're coming up to our 20 year anniversary. Um, so over those 20 years, um, we have built out our EDC, uh, data management services, our RTSM, so randomization and trial supply management, CTMS and EPRO. And all of that is within our unified eClinical suite, our Fusion platform. Uh, so we're going to be talking to you uh, today about uh, the execution of oncology trials and some of those key study challenges um, being uh, cohort assignment flexibility, so everything around enrollment, um, the complex data capture requirements, so different types of data, um, as well as um, how often those data uh, points can be from different vendors, different areas, and how we can work to bring that all together. Um, so let's talk to you about some solutions. So I'll kick us off with our first item around cohort assignment. So in many cases, we're talking about uh, managing complex pre-screening uh, allocations. So being able to determine um, on the uh, capture and determine the investigator's assessment of which uh, cohort or slot they should be associated with, um, and then also having that ability to confirm. Um, uh, many of these cohorts and doses are dynamic, so you might have an idea of what uh, the doses may be, but you might be able to continue going above that, or you might need to modify and uh, fall between. Um, additionally, we're looking at that flexibility um, and being able to dynamically um, be able to update uh, your system. So what can we do? So the technology piece is the cohort management tools. And so what this does is it allows you to manage that dynamic activities with fewer resources. All of that data is coming together in a single place um, and you're able to um, on a real time basis, activate those cohorts, determine what those dose levels are and adjust as needed. Um, on the slot allocation piece, then of course, you're able to assign those cohorts or assign those slots dynamically to the subjects. So just a little bit more about our tools. So through our IWS cohort management tools, we're able to manage everything from simple to complex enrollment. And of course, having everything fully integrated as a bonus um, and having that linked to your inventory. So we already touched on the dynamic cohort activation and dose selection, but additionally, um, being able to manage enrollment at each of the levels, so study level, site level, and subject levels, um, when we're talking about uh, ra uh, randomization and cohort management, often um, we can run into scenarios where a subject maybe is, uh, is enrolled, but they don't receive treatment or they're not able to um, continue until that DLT assessment period has been completed. So in order to replace those um, in a controlled environment, um, we're able to do that directly with Infusion. On the eligibility side, so having everything in a unified suite means that you're able to pull all of that data together um, and reduce uh, the scenario where there's redundant data entry uh, required on the site side uh, because they have to re-enter key subject details. Um, and then through all of this, we're able to visualize um, the progress on enrollment um, and through your various cohorts um, with your dashboards and uh, your reports that are fully configurable. 
Um, just diving a little bit more into the dynamic dose selection and cohort activation. So um, what we're able to support is predefined or flexible fields. So as we talked about, um, when you're unsure of what that dose might be um, or what all doses uh, might be possible, then we're able to um, add that flexibility in. Additionally, you're able to disable or enable those enrollment caps. We talked about being able to control um, enrollment at the different levels. Um, so sometimes you want to be able to freely enroll um, and just approve on the individual subject level, or you want to have uh, that additional control or cap. Um, on the inventory side, so we talked about that integration. So we do support the ability to identify a specific um, inventory batch or type to ensure um, that the inventory is optimized appropriately, um, and only those approved uh, uh, those approved uh, inventory uh, doses, concentrations, etc., are used for the appropriate cohorts. On the slot approval side, so this is everything from pre-screening through the slot allocation and the enrollment confirmation. So we're bringing together all of the different stakeholders. So the site might um, initiate the process and then the CRO or sponsor and or medical monitor will um, uh, complete the applicable tasks throughout the way. So it's really bringing together really potentially complex um, processes. And instead of having to manually um, uh, document uh, uh, and track through Excels um, and manual emails, all of those activities are handled within um, this process. Uh, so we're able to automatically update the subject statuses, um, capture any additional details, maybe there's some source document uploads that are required from the site, um, and any additional kind of back and forth communication. So if you have a pre-screening subject, um, are they still potentially eligible, um, and being able to track um, any uh, metrics around that. And of course, as I noted, being able to track uh, the various statuses, so anticipated versus confirmed enrollment, um, and any key approvals. Uh, so our next key study challenge uh, is on the data entry requirements um, and site errors, uh, specifically around recess criteria. Caitlin? Great, thanks, Heather. Um, so for oncology trials, we have a lot of different data points that we're obviously collecting on these patients. And we want to make sure that the data is going to be of the highest quality um, for your overall submission, because that's the point of the trial. Um, in order to do that, we want to make sure that we're making it as easy as possible for the site to complete that data entry, to do it accurately, to be able to do it um, in a timely manner and, and make it as easy as possible for you to get that data. Um, so when we're looking specifically around recess criteria and other uh, similar complex data entry requirements, that's going to be all focused based off of your EDC design, how we're setting up that ECRF, and the kind of functionality and support you have um, that you can utilize and um, leverage within a system to help make that as easy as possible. So um, by setting up your ECRF and EDC in a really easy to use format, which we're going to talk about in a second, um, that's going to help improve the original data entry that's done by the site. Um, so making sure that it's going in as correct as possible the first time, decreasing the amount of queries maybe needed later on by the monitors and data managers, uh, which overall is going to help make sure that patient data is as clean as possible going in. Um, and obviously that's super important. Um, a lot of oncology trials, as Heather mentioned, are looking at those different cohorts, making decisions, et cetera. So being proactive about the status of that data is really, really helpful, specifically in oncology trials. Um, so to do that, we talked about kind of the ECRF design piece. Um, so this is just a sample screen of uh, a tumor assessment for rhesus criteria. Um, ignore my test data entries, they're not accurate. Um, but this is a simple way that we can kind of set up how to flow that data for the site coordinator. So having one page at the screening or baseline visit where they're able to enter all of the target lesions, all of the non-target lesions, um, we wanna make sure that anything that could be avoided as a data entry error is. So in this example, we're auto-calculating the different sums so that you know, we don't have to wait for the site to calculate that on their own. We don't need the monitor to double check that math. We're just trying to save time at those different steps um, to make it as really easy as possible 
Um, also providing um, on-screen instructions is really helpful as to exactly what we're looking for for each of these questions, what we're looking uh, for those responses, and being able to put those instructions directly in your EDC as opposed to asking the site to not only do your data entry, but then re um, refer to a 100 plus page completion guideline document to figure out how to do one ECRF page. Um, so making it as easy as possible. Moving to our subsequent visit. So the first page was our screening visit. This is our subsequent visit where we're doing re-measurements of those specific lesions. Um, and what we do here is we actually pre-populate as much static data as we can from the original baseline data. So we've pulled over the lesion numbers, we've pulled over the location. Um, if there's anything else specific about the lesions itself as identifiers that you wanted to pull forward, we want to pull those forward. That way for the site, it's super easy. They have two target lesions at um, baseline. They have two target lesions to complete data entry for at this visit. And when they click in to do their data entry, they only need to complete the data that's new. Um, so by pre-populating that information, it's going to save time, not just on the site side, but also in data management or the monitors to reconcile to make sure, okay, well, they called this one tumor one, but in this visit, they're calling it tumor two. So we need to update this. Um, so again, keeping that data as clean as possible um, from the point of entry. Um, additionally, we're looking at still doing all of those auto calculations that we can. So calculating all of the requirements for this visit, calculating any percent changes that are needed, um, any of the different information that we want to capture to just make it as easy as possible for the site. So those are just a few examples of different um, tools or setups that we can use to help make it really, really easy for the site um, so that they can get their data entry in and it can be clean. Great, thank um, you. So, okay, moving over to our third item. Um, so bringing together their data from multiple sources. So as you can see here, these are a few different key areas, EDC, safety data, lab data, including safety and PK, uh, the biopsy, lab specimen data, um, as well as imaging. So lots of different data coming together. Caitlin? Um, so when we have all of these different components of data, um, there's a couple different ways that this data can come in. So we, we think about a central lab data, obviously, um, the first source of that data is the site, and then it's the lab, and the lab has what those results are. Um, so what we would recommend for this type of scenario is to be able to import that data into your unified platform or tool that you're using. Um, and we'll talk about why that's important in just a moment, um, but being able to import that data so that it's readily available for whatever you're looking at. On the other side, um, using a unified tool um, is what's going to help bring together some of those other components. So uh, instead of having a separate safety database, using a safety database that's already part of your CRF. That way there's no additional work for the sites. As Heather mentioned when she was talking about um, the cohort assignment piece, a lot of times we're asking the sites to complete the exact same data entry in different places to identify the patient, get the relevant information, and then we're asking them to take that information and capture certain parts within your ECRF for that patient. So having everything kind of streamlined and together is gonna make that a lot easier especially for the CRAs and data managers down the line when they're reconciling, um, but also make it a lot easier for the sites up front. So by pulling all of this data together from multiple sources, um, we're going to save time at the end of the study instead of waiting and sending different data sets to biostats and waiting for them to magically put it all together, um, being able to kind of see that in real time and look at that. And that's going to give you overall awareness and uh, oversight to what the subject data is in real time. Um, so you'd be able to see all of that data uh, in reports and being able to have that full picture of those subjects without any additional work. So um, if we move forward, um, we're kind of taking this idea of having all of these separate systems and putting it all into one place. So um, whether that's having a safe, separate safety database or labs or imaging data, we want to put it all into one place, so a unified platform, which will allow us to be able to generate those types of reports. So if we move to the next slide, um, this is just a sample of a patient profile report that can be generated in real time 
um, for example, with Infusion, um, and it's pulling together all of that data. So at the top, we have, you know, basic CRF data, some demographic information about the patient. We have the CTM, uh, or sorry, the cohort piece as to what cohort they're on, when their first dose was. Uh, we have the safety data, what their adverse events and serious adverse events. And then at the bottom, we have their chemistry profile. Um, so this is actually pulling in the central lab data from that other source, um, pulling it in so that you can see those results in real time within the patient profile or looking at trends of listings. Um, and by having that data, we're able to actually flag any highs or lows or out of the ranges and anything that we want to kind of heat map and draw our attention to. Um, so by pulling all of that data, we're able to see these kind of aggregate reports, not just on a patient level, but on an overall study level in real time, which is obviously super beneficial, um, rather than waiting for a bias to, to kind of pull all of those different pieces together. So taking everything that we touched on there, and thank you, Caitlin. Uh, so really looking at what a unified approach is, and we kind of uh, touched on that as we uh, talked through each of those the key technologies. Um, but our approach here at Axiom is through our platform fusion, having that really act as the connected hub for all of your study data. So as you can see here, these are uh, the different buckets of uh, modules that we have available, and that's all part of that full integrated suite, um, all through a single logon. So uh, we talked about uh, the cohort management through IWRS. We talked about central lab. Um, we talked about uh, the various um, safety activities. So having that all in one system means that you don't need that end of, uh, there's not as much work at the end of study trying to bring everything together. And of course, there's that visibility throughout. We do have the flexibility um, when it comes to configuration to um, have just a, a few selected modules, um, or uh, you can do EDC and those selected modules, or of course, with the most benefit um, comes from that full a complete fusion suite and it's all based on your needs um, and we're able to kind of pick and choose um, based on your protocol um, based on on your um, internal workflows vendor requirements etc uh, so just like we have on the technology side there's also the services that you can pick and choose to suit your needs that includes biostats uh, pharmacovigilance um, clinical management and monitoring as well as of course the key piece being the data analytics and data management all of this comes together um, again with that single sign-on to all of your modules there's that single um, uh, set of services that everyone is working through that same piece of technology so there's the centralized um, support um, as well as of course the dashboards and the reporting so you're able to visualize and have access to all of those critical data points so then you can make those decisions and not be focusing on kind of collating data bringing things together manually um, reconciling um, you can really focus on the decision making and oversight uh, so when we're talking about that kind of data focus, so like we talked about, there's the 24-7 real-time access. Um, all of this is coming together through that unified EDC inventory, CTMS, and of course that reporting is that critical piece. Um, you really allow, are able to own your data um, and of course owning that access to your data and uh, be able to have that full oversight to make sure that all all of those pieces are happening as expected and if not then you're able to act quickly to course correct um, and that of course includes any study risks so being able to uh, monitor those risks uh, and um, act appropriately so our approach really is it's a layered approach um, as you can see, we have that reporting as uh, the center. We have all of our technology, our services, um, and uh, the data coming together. And when it comes down to it, it's not just the technology um, and the services. Um, part of that service is um, the people behind it. Um, and uh, we're really committed to study success and working with you to make sure that you have the right technology, that you have the access that you need, that you have the support um, for a, a truly successful study.
thank you so much for uh, taking some time uh, to talk to us today. Um, please, if you have any questions, reach out. We're happy to discuss um, and looking forward to your questions. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone.